saying, let us rejoice and be glad in it. I was glad when they said unto me, come let us go into the house of the Lord. We know gladness because we have been called to praise. So wherever you are right now on this morning, let's give God some praise. Today is the fifth Sunday of May and it is Youth Sunday. So prepare yourself for a treat. Following our prayer and scripture that will be done by Sister Maya Ford, we will be in the hands of our praise team. Come on, say to God, let's have church. Good morning, church. My name is Maya Ford, and it's Youth Sunday, such a joyous occasion. I will be praying and then reading a scripture. So if you can, please bow your heads and close your eyes. Dear Lord, we just thank you. We thank you for another opportunity to fellowship on another Youth Sunday. We thank you for the youth. We thank you for whatever you're going to do for this service. We thank you for what you already have done, what you will do, and what you can do, God. We just thank you for who you are. And God, I ask that you bless this youth service, that it truly blesses and it encourages and it uplifts the youth. Whatever their circumstances may be, despite that, I ask that you encourage and uplift them. Whatever it is, if it's suicidal thoughts, if it's bullying, whatever the issue may be, God, I ask that they can come to this service, listen, and be uplifted and encouraged. And Lord, I just ask that you continue to keep the rest of the con congregation and that you continue to uplift Gospel more as a whole. And Lord, we thank you for who you are and what you will, can, and will do. Lord. We just thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Now I'll be reading from Psalm 100, a song of praise for the Lord's faithfulness to his people. Make a joyful shout to the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who has made us not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and to in his, into his courts with praise. Be thankful to him and bless his name. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting and his truth endures for all generations. I hope that everyone enjoys our youth service and be blessed. Oh 
Wow, it is already May of 2021. My has a year flown by. And who would have thought we would still be in this virtual atmosphere? Not me. I know for adults it was very hard for us to get our bearings on this new way of doing things. And it wasn't just hard for us, but I'm sure it was also hard for our young people. So today is very special. Actually, this time is a very special time because many of our young people, they are going to school online, something very strange and very different. They no longer have the fun and the joy and the fellowship of being next to each other or being next to their classmates. They have to do everything from their home. So when I hear that young people are excelling in this new alternate universe, I think it's only right for us to celebrate them. I have three young people that I'd like to celebrate that have all three achieved honor roll while being in virtual school. The first person is Sister Cassidy Smith. The second person is Brother Marcus Ford. And the third person is Brother Devon Williams. Come on, saints, let's applaud them on their honor roll and their high achievement. So on this morning, I would like to recognize a young lady who I would like to call the Youth Department Valedictorian for the month of May. This young lady has perfect attendance. She achieved the English Award, the Scholar of the Year Award, President's Award, not just that, but she is a very well-rounded young lady that excels in her academics, but also in other areas, such as fine arts. And she was also awarded the Choir Award, Singer of the Year, Starlet Express Choir, Most Valuable Member, Show Choir Express Choir, Best Soprano, Show Choir Express Choir, most Helpful Member, Show Choir, Express Choir. Best Soprano, Starlet Express Choir. And I'm sure the list goes on and on. Let's celebrate our very own Sister Jo Nikes. In just a few Sundays, a tremendous thing is going to be happening here at the Gospel Memorial Church. In a few Sundays, it's going to be Father's Day. Father's Day. And we at Gospel Memorial take our fathers seriously and we appreciate every father. And so men of the church, those of you who are fathers, please RSVP. To Mother Kathy Glover, her number is area code 310-880-9517. We need you to do that before June 10th. And so every father, please RSVP to Mother Kathy Glover. Again, her number is area code 310-880-9517. Before June 10th, something very special is being planned for fathers. And in order for you to be a part of it, when the purchases are made of that special Father's Day gift, we want you to be included. And the only way you can be included is to RSVP. Thank you so very much. The Bible tells us to... Rejoice with those who rejoice. And on the other hand, to weep with those who mourn. And so on this Sunday, we pause to remember the Johnson family 
as they go through their time of bereavement for the loss of Elder Dwayne Johnson. We certainly appreciate his contribution to the ministry, to the cause of Christ. His mother is our church secretary and Sister Patricia, we love you and we join with you in your time of sorrow. And our prayers is that God will sustain you and the Lord will lift you up. Know that your church is here with you and for you. And may you now be blessed. Saints of God, thank you so much for this time. I am so honored to be the youth leader here at Gospel Memorial. I would like to recognize our leader, our pastor, Bishop Joe L. Ely, who saw it fit and is so kind to allow the young people to go forth every fifth Sunday, even in the midst of a pandemic. Let's celebrate our leader, Bishop Joe L. Ely. Now it's time for the main event. It is time for the Word of God. And you all are in for a treat. We have a profound, prolific, and dynamic speaker that is coming to share with us this morning. And that is in the persons of Elder Tony Peavy, all the way from Pomona, California. Elder Peavy is a friend of mine. He is a friend of the church, and he is a friend of Gospel Memorial. He is a leader at his local church, which is Mount Sinai Church of God in Christ, under the leadership of Bishop Terrence Rome. And I don't know about you, but I am super excited because he is a Holy Ghost preacher. So following our sermonic selection that will be done by a very special guest praise dancer by the name of Sister Quantinique, I want you to get your souls ready to be stirred up by our speaker. Before you do that, or before our sermonic selection comes, do me a favor. Turn to your neighbor, whoever your neighbor may be, type it in the comments and say, get ready, get ready, get ready. If it had not been for the shaking, I never would have been ready for the making, no. If it had not been for the beating, I would have never knew how anointed I would be.
feel a beating in the spirit. I feel I'm pressing in the spirit, preparing me for greater. Well, praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Listen, if you're anybody, you're part of everybody. So wherever you are in the dining room, the bedroom, the hallway, the bu on a bus stop, on a bike. Listen, take 20 seconds out of the last 24 hours that God has given you and just give God glory and give God praise. He's a good God, a great God, and he is greatly to be praised. He's worthy of every hand clap, worthy of every thank you. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. So we just praise our great God on this great morning. So this is the day that the Lord has made, and we've come to rejoice and be glad in it. So for just five more seconds come on and give him glory and give him praise i'm gonna just praise him with you because the way i feel it's oh magnify the lord with me and let us exalt his name together come on and let's give him glory and while you're thanking him dear god we thank you for this day we thank you for all things for your goodness and your grace on today, for your loving kindness, which is better than life. So, Lord, we give you praise. Our lips bless you on today. Now, Lord, for these next few moments, we are asking that you use me on this morning. Lord, bless young people everywhere. In the name of Jesus, Lord, bless this house, the angel of this house. In the name of Jesus, the saints of God everywhere. And Lord, because you've been good to us and you're good right now, and we believe that you shall be good and that your word is good, we praise you in advance and say thank God and amen. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. I thank God for being here on this morning for this very fine youth day on today. Be, I thank God because he's the head of my life. Thank God for being saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost. Thank God for being at the Gospel Memorial Church of God in Christ, where the great leader is the great Bishop Joe L. Ely, who is actually in the house even right now. We thank God for him. We thank God for him all over, wherever you are. Just say, God bless Bishop Ely. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. We thank God for this particular occasion upon which I'm here, which is Youth Day. I received an invitation from your youth leader, wonderful woman of God, Sister Tiffany Glover, who not only serves here, but she serves as my boss, supervisor, boss, in our jurisdiction. She is our jurisdictional chair lady also. We thank God for her, and God bless her for this wonderful and most gracious invitation. Listen, it's Youth Day, and we want to have a conversation with the young people all over Long Beach, all over California, all over the nation, and all over the world. So let's just talk for a few minutes. I want you to get your Bibles. If you have it, go to two particular scriptures that I'm going to talk about on today. Talk from, rather. They are Romans 12 and 2. It says, do not conform to the patterns of this world. But be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is. His good, pleasing, and perfect will. For good measure, I have another scripture. 1 Corinthians 15, 33. It says, do not be misled. Bad company corrupts good character. My young brothers and sisters on today, well, actually, everyone, it's a message for everyone, but it goes especially to my young brothers and sisters on today. I am going to talk about two particular words, two particular words that I believe that uh, have the ability to shape or affect our young people in a positive or negative way. We see so many things happening in society that involve our young people, and the Lord placed in my spirit to tell young people all over the world about these two particular words. These particular words, they sound the same. They kind of run in the same circles. And I realized that had I paid attention to these two words, I would have avoided some major pitfalls, potholes, and problems in life. And for you, my goal is, first of all, that you accept Jesus. And then second of all, 
that you avoid pitfalls, potholes, and problems in life, and you pay attention to these two words. It's graduation season. People graduating all over the nation, all over the world. It's summertime, and it's a lot of vacations, and it's supposed to be a whole lot of fun. But during this time, a lot of young people have decisions to make. Their lives are hanging in the balance, and uh, the pendulum can go either way, this way or that way, because of these two words. Progress can be made or not be made because of these two words. School can be completed or not completed, greatly in part because of these two words. You can accept Jesus or choose not to accept him, greatly in part because of these two words. Well, I've talked enough about them. You want to know what they are? Wherever you are, just say these two words, trends and friends. Yes, that's right, trends and friends. They kind of sound alike. They, they, they must be relatives or something. But let me tell you what trends are. Trends, it's a general direction in which something is moving, developing, or changing. I want to make sure that I tell you on the onset of this word that trends change. I need you to remember that, that trends change. In general, with us being humans, and especially young people, we tend to follow trends. And I want to tell you also that, you know, it's okay to follow some trends. Some trends are necessary for us to keep up with what's going on in life. You know, uh, probably most notably would be technology. We all know about it. I would have never guessed in all of my years that my parents, which are up in age, would have a Facebook page. But they have one now because they've tried to keep up with the trends. A mother at my church stopped me and said she has not seen me on Instagram. And I said, well, mother, I'm not on Instagram, nor am I on Instagram, but I'm not on Instagram. And so, you know, uh, because she knew about it because she's keeping up with the trends. And when I was younger, a friend of mine named Jim Bell, he had a tree house. And all of the people who were kind of cool in the neighborhood got to go into the tree house. I thought that that was pretty much what it was. I got a call uh, the other day and someone said, you didn't accept my invitation to the clubhouse. And I didn't know what a clubhouse was because I haven't ca caught up with that trend. You know, some of the greatest preachers that I've ever heard, they preach from iPads and for convenience. Now I like old fashioned paper, but I'll tell you what, it's because they've kept up with the trends and they follow those trends and that's good. Then there's some financial trends. Young people, you know, right about now, what's hot is Bitcoin and cryptocurrency. They might be cool. I don't have any of them, but I would tell you this. Nothing beats old-fashioned paying your ties and saving a little bit of your money. You know, I follow all kinds of trends. I follow fashion trends. I follow some language trends. Probably can't tell today because I'm in a suit and tie, but I'll tell you what, if you catch me on any other day, I got that drip for you. And so, so, so what you know, I, 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 I'm telling you, you know, all trends aren't bad. So we follow some. But I do also want to tell you this. There are some trends that you can follow that will get you swallowed up to the point of no return. And so we as believers and, and young believers, my young kings and queens, we have to be careful which trends we follow. That's why I read my scripture. Romans 12 and 2, it said, do not conform to the patterns of this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. What this is saying is don't get caught up in the trends of the world. Guy by the name of Ice Cube, you all know him. He said a long time ago, rule number three, don't get caught up because people are doing everything that's thought up. Well, Paul said it way before Ice Cube. He said it, uh, don't get caught up in the trends of this world because the trends of this world are designed to bring you down. You know, Paul wrote these instructions because there was a need to stress salvation and the difference between holy living and unholy living. And I want to tell you, young people, unholy living will bring you down, and following worldly trends will bring you down. Yes, 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 yes. And so, so now when you hear the term the world, I grew up in church, and uh, we always heard about the world, the world. Uh, I was wondering, what is the world? Is it, are they talking about the earth? 
No, 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 no. The world or worldly things that Paul was talking about are those things that aren't pleasing to God. And, you know, uh, they're the thoughts and the ways that aren't Go, that they go against what God would have us to be. They go against God's character. They go against God's kingdom. And so trends of the world will get you off track. Trends of the world will block your blessings, young folks. Trends of the world can get you into some trouble. Trends of the world are nothing but seasons, and you know seasons change, that can be detrimental to your life. You know, I know that uh, trends change, but in trends of the world, their reasoning always stays the same. It's a plot of the enemy and a ploy of the enemy to steal, kill, and destroy. Steal your hopes, kill your dreams, and ultimately destroy your life and destroy your relationship with God. You know, young brothers and sisters, when you, when you hear of worldly trends, you've got to know that they all go against the teachings of God. They may look good, they may sound good, but they are against the teaching of God. And so that's why Paul back then and me on today, that's why, that's why, that's why we're begging you. Uh, don't copy the things of the world. Don't agree with what the world does because the world's trends will not bode f well for your future. And you know, the people of God, I want to tell you that the enemy is slick. He gets you caught up in gateway trends. You know, they start off looking cool, but they lead to something else. Saw on Facebook the other day, you all know him, his name's young Lil Yachty. He's one of the little rappers. He was uh, marketing some nail polish for males. That's a gateway trend. We see trends where young ladies who are uh, on so social media, they're encouraged to be uh, provocative, to be attractive. That's a gateway trend, not realizing that what they're attracting are predators and those who mean them no good. And let me say this, social media is a great piece of trend that we should follow, but you got to be very careful who you follow on there. Listen, uh, you know, when, when, when one of the things that the enemy does, right about now we have uh, what we call weed, blunts. You know what it is. They say it's Mother Earth. There's nothing wrong with it. Well, if it is Mother Earth, let me just tell you, you don't know where on earth it came from, who on earth tampered with it, and what on earth it can do to you. That, you know, it, I, I tell you, I had a cousin who was on his way to San Jose State to play football, and right before he was set to graduate, uh, this was back in the day, he decided to smoke a blunt, and he didn't know that it was laced with cocaine. Needless to say, he didn't graduate. He didn't go to San Jose. He ended up over there off of San Pedro walking around with no shoes on and no shirt on. You know, it's, it's because it was a gateway trend. Let me tell you, there, there's young tr uh, a trend of young people engaging in premarital sex, thinking that they're cool, thinking that they're grown. What do I have to tell you about that? Well, I've seen it so many times that young folks get caught up in doing the grown-up, and then when the girl gets blown up, no one wants to own up to what's been done. And so that's because it's a gateway trend. Believe it or not, it's our church people who are getting caught up in gateway trends, and they are get going down the drain. And I want to tell you, if you are to get caught up in a gateway, it should be the gateway to God's way, because God's way leads us to have put him first. God's way would say for us to, uh, what it does and says in the Bible in Matthew 6, 33, young man, young lady, it's no age uh, discrimination, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these other things should shall be added unto you. Listen, I want to tell you, God's way would have you to be respectful. God's way would have you to be excellent. God's way would have you to act like you're royalty, like you're a king, kid. You may not live in a mansion, but you can still act like royalty. Why? Because you're a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation. You're God's special possession. And you yourself can declare those great praises and say, God has brought me out of darkness, those worldly trends, into his wonderful and marvelous light. Let me tell you this one thing. What, let me tell you, let me tell you, you have a choice to make on today. You can either follow the trends of the world and you, or you can follow Christ. Let me tell you very quickly, very quickly, you know, though, God is the one that can change you. If you've fallen into those worldly trends, God can yet change you. And listen, when he changes you, he changes you for the better. Because all kinds of different things come when, when he changes you. Jeremiah 29 and 11 says that I know the thoughts that I have toward you. Says the Lord, God, think, 
thoughts of peace and not evil to give you a future and a hope. Listen, it doesn't mean that you won't have little problems and things, but let me tell you that no weapon formed against you will prosper. I want to tell you as a young person, it doesn't matter what you're going through, all things, not just small things, but big and tall things, work together for the good of them that love God and those who are called according to his purpose. And what I found out very quickly as I get ready to close is usually when you follow those wrong trends, you seem to hang with the wrong friends. And the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 15, 33, don't be misled. Bad company corrupts good character. And another version of the Bible says, don't let anybody fool you. Bad company makes a bad, bad companions makes a good person bad. Yes, this was needed advice back then, and it's very much so needed right now. Paul wrote it because uh, they were having some problems believing in Jesus dying and raising, being raised from the dead. And you know, I'm going to tell you, bad friends will have you believing anything, but you better believe on Jesus. You know, the most uh, famous song about friends came from a group called Houdini. They said friends is a word we use every day. Most of the time we use it in the wrong way. Now we can look the word up again and again, but the dictionary doesn't know the meaning of friends. And if you ask me, you know, I couldn't be much help because a friend is someone who you judge for yourself. Well, I beg to differ because a dictionary told me a real good dic uh, definition of friend, and it says a person whom one knows and one whom has a bond. And that last word is very key because it's a bond. A bond means that you're stuck together somehow. And you got to be careful who you get stuck to, young people, uh, who you bond with. You need to stick with Jesus. No, it might not be popular, but stick with Jesus. Listen, it may not... Uh, get you the, you know, uh, Mr. Personality, but stick with Jesus. You might get teased a little bit, but stick with Jesus. You know, you may not be popular for being bad, but that's a good thing. So you need to stick with Jesus. Let me tell you, if most of your good friends are worldly and doing worldly things, chances are they can influence your relationship with God. I don't care how old you are, young or old, your friends have influence on you. Now, I'm not ex at all suggesting that you're not cool that you're not cordial, that you don't have fun. Not saying that at all. Because after all, you know, we want to draw them with our Christ-like behaviors. But what you want, you want friends who think like you. And sometimes it's a little hard, but let me tell you, that's why you, you're blessed to have great places like Gospel Memorial, where they have uh, youth ministries and vacation Bible schools and different things going on for the youth. So you can meet people with the like mind. The Bible encourages us to, uh, to, to, you know, choose good friends. And I think the biggest problem is that sometimes we, we, we want to fit in, so we think we, we just go ahead and we want to hang out with the world. First of all, you don't just need to fit in. If you're a king's kid, you need to stand out. You, need, uh, you know, now a friend of mine, Dr. Lisa Liggins, she said, if you want to stand out, be outstanding. The Bible also tells us, Proverbs 12, 26, that the righteous choose their friends carefully, but the way of the wicked leads them astray. My brothers and sisters, you don't want to go astray. You know, they say birds of a feather flock together. And, you know, it's because of that particular principle uh, that you need to have godly friends. Let me tell you a quick analogy real quick. You're a good guy. You're a good girl. You're in the church. You're in the church. You're doing well. You're hanging out with those who are doing some bad things. You're in the car with some who've done some bad things. You didn't do anything bad, but they've done some bad things. If the police stops you, guess what? You're all going down. And so, so you want to remember that. So that's why you want to have people with the same kind of relationship with Christ as you. People who will support you in need. Uh, the greatest friend that you can have is one that when you're down, they'll be down with you. And one, when you need a, to be picked up, they will take you to the ultimate picker-upper, and that's Jesus Christ. Nine times out of ten, when you're doing wrong, those who are doing wrong with you won't be there to help you. Bad friends will leave you holding the bag. And sometimes that bag can get a little heavy when you're holding it all by yourself. But let me tell you, it would just be, wouldn't it be great to have a friend like God who is always there? The Bible says in Proverbs 18, 24 a man of many companions may come to ruin but there is a friend who sticks closer than a brother which is just it's in essence saying that Jesus is not a fair weather friend even during this particular time of social distancing what Jesus will stick close to you listen now young people and young, young people I dare not tell you 
about trends and friends without giving you a great alternative. You know, uh, the, the, the best alternative, the best friend that you can have, the best trend or person you can follow is Jesus Christ. You don't have to worry about Jesus being trendy because he never changes. You don't have to worry about Jesus going out of style because his love is everlasting. As a matter of fact, uh, his, he loved you so much. Over 2,000 years ago, he gave his son Jesus to die for you. The Bible says in one of the most quoted scriptures in the Bible, John 3, 16. For God, come on, say it with me if you're watching. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever would believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. You know, that wasn't just for them. That applies to you watching even right now. Listen, the, there's a benefit, uh, and that's eternal life. But now I'll tell you what, that's, on the, that's, that's later on down the line. There are some benefits that you can have right now for following Jesus. Listen, you get comfort when you are lonely. You get uh, a guide, one who will guide you in all truth. I'm telling you what happens when you follow Jesus instead of following worldly trends. You get peace that people will not understand. Uh, you get uh, an edge in life. We call it favor. Yes, you know, you know, you get your needs met when you follow Jesus. You get joy in the midst of your worst situations. Listen, we're not naive to say that young people don't have bad situations, but when you have Jesus, you can count it all joy. Listen, when you get when you follow Jesus, let me tell you, young folks, you get help in school. You get help with your behavior. Your behavior can change for the better when you follow Jesus. You get help with your schoolwork. You get help with your career. Listen, you get help with problems when you follow Jesus. When you follow Jesus, the reward is always greater than the risk. That's why the mothers used to say, what a friend we have in Jesus. All of our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege it is to carry everything to God in prayer. You know, I, I thought I was pretty cool because I have an elite group of friends. I have, you know, just to name a few, Shaquille O'Neal, Jesse Jackson, um, a couple of other guys, Michael Jordan, just an elite group. But that's just a, a minuscule group. You want to be part of the most elite group that you can? Listen, you become friends of Jesus. Israel Houghton said, I am a friend of God. Are you a friend of God? Listen, worldly trends, they lead to dead ends. But when you follow Jesus, your future is bright. They got to put the stunners on to look at you because you're shining so bright for Jesus. So the next time, young person, the next time, young woman, young boy, young man, listen, the next time someone tries to get you to follow a worldly trend, what you need to do, you need to proudly and boldly tell them, oh, no, no, no. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning back. As a matter of fact, you can have this whole world, but give me Jesus. And as I get ready to close, I want to go back to one point that I made so you understand what I was talking about. That point was the gateway to God's way. And it's found in Romans 10 and 9. You know, there's no age requirement. You can start following Jesus and have him to become your best friend even now. I'm talking about if you're in elementary school, if you're in, I guess it's now called middle school, we call it junior high, but if you're in middle school, if you're in high school, if you're in college, if you're kind of deciding what you want to do in life, this is just for you even right now. The scripture says, just confess with your mouth and believe in your heart, the Lord Jesus, that God has raised him from the dead. Guess what? You shall be saved. This, my brothers and sisters, my young kings and queens, this will start the best budding friendship that you could ever have. And that's with our great savior, Jesus. My young brothers and sisters, as the summer starts, you, you know, we're kind of opening up here in California and probably all over the world, wherever you are, I just want to encourage you as you start back hanging out a little bit, pay attention to the trends and pick godly friends. I hope I've helped you and encouraged you on today. I want to pray for you. 
If you'd allow me just for a few moments while you're looking at the screen, let's connect with me. If you're not saved, I gave you the gateway to God's way. We can pray that prayer. We also want to just pray that God will bless you, keep you, and have you to make right choices. Dear God, we thank you. We thank you for this day. We thank you for all things, for your goodness and your grace. We thank you for being our Savior on today. And Lord, because you are our Savior, if we've done any wrong, if we said any wrong, thought any wrong, we ask that you forgive us. And we confess with our mouths and believe with our hearts, the Lord Jesus, that you've raised your son Jesus from the dead. And your word says that we're saved. So we thank you for salvation. Now, Lord, as you've given us salvation, we are asking that you give us wisdom, give us to make good choices. To not follow trends, but to follow you. To choose good and godly friends. And Lord, if you help us, we'll do it. And for what you have done, we say thank you. For what you're doing now, we say thank you. And the blessing upon all of the young people watching even right now, we say thank God and amen. God bless you. Well, well, well. Today is Youth Sunday. Help me appreciate our young people. Wherever you are, would you put your hands together and give God praise for our young people. Come on. They're full of fire. They're full of enthusiasm, vitality. Let's praise the Lord for our young people. The great psalmist and King David said, I once was young. But of course, his latter testimony, but now he was old. God bless our young people. We praise the Lord for missionary Tiffany Glover and the young people of the Gospel Memorial Church. Come on, once again, let's put our hands together and praise the Lord for the leadership of our youth, Sister Tiffany Glover, and all those that work with young people. Come on, once again, let's praise the Lord. What an awesome word has been delivered here this morning. Elder Tony Peavy preached out of his heart. Young people, I pray that you would take uh, notice and pay attention a great and powerful word from Elder PV. Help me appreciate him, a tremendous man of God who shared the word. Come on, help me appreciate our guest minister on this morning. And it's now our time to give. What shall I render unto the Lord for all of his benefits toward me. I owe God something. Matter of fact, I owe God everything. I owe him something, but I owe him everything. I owe him the praise, I owe him glory and honor, but I also owe him the substance of my increase. And so I want to appeal to each of you, the people of God, to share, to give, as God has blessed you. The Lord has blessed each of us, and it's now our turn to share and to give back unto the Lord. Gospel Memorial is a tithing church. We believe in tithe and in offerings. And even during the pandemic, God has been good to us and has continued to bless us. And so I'm going to ask you now to prepare to give. At the bottom of the screen, you will see the ways in which you can electronically give. On your phone, you can give through GiveLify or 
through PayPal. Or you, of course, can do the conventional thing. You can get the checkbook and you can write the check, make it payable to the Gospel Memorial Church. Our address is 1480 Atlantic Avenue in the city of Long Beach. Our zip is 90813. If I went a little fast, notice the bottom of the screen. You can give on your phone through the Givelify app or through PayPal, or you can write the check to the Gospel Memorial Church, 1480 Atlantic Avenue, Long Beach, California. Our zip is 90813, and I pray God's richest blessings upon each of you as you give unto the Lord. Father, it is in your name that we bless everyone who gives, whether they give little or much, as they give as you have made provisions to them, bless them. If there's an individual who has nothing financially to give, we touch and agree with them that on the next occasion, they would be blessed to give. For we ask it all in Jesus' name, for his sake, amen and amen. The Lord bless you as you give.